and welcome to another budget and lego video now today we've got a car behind us it doesn't matter which one it is because we are going to be showing you how to check the brake fluid and how to do a full brake flush on your own now i do get grief in a lot of my videos oh you know we don't have all these expensive tools and stuff at the end of the day this is what i do if you came to me and i was basically working with hammers and chisels and didn't look professional and didn't have all the stuff would you come to me no so it's like everything you would you go to a hospital that has machines back in the 40s no so you know you have to go with the times you have to get modern machinery to do modern cars it's as simple as that so this video maybe not for the DIYer in the sense of the tools I'm going to be using more for maybe the professional garage out there but you will still get an idea so what we're going to do first is we're going to check the boiling point of the brake fluid because it's the thing people forget to do they don't really change the brake fluid it discolors that gets water in it and essentially it doesn't work properly you get brake fade and there's loads and loads of tools out there to actually test it but if you want to test it properly professionally well then boil the brake fluid and see the boiling point i would suggest any way to replace your brake fluid you know once a year maybe once every two years but once a year you know you're not going to have an issue it's not a particularly big job you can do it on your own with other tools so here we go so the first thing i'm going to use is my brake boiler and that's the one i'm using it connects to your battery you take the bottom off put it in press the button and we get what temperature the brake is boiling at this is a Toyota and I think the, the kind of the factory specs is around about 150, 160 degrees. Now, if it's anyways close to that, I'm just going to replace it. We're going to replace it anyway because it's really black and horrible. So we're going to see. So the first thing I do is bang this on the battery. Now, as you can see, we've got a brake reservoir here. We just need to make sure what this is doing is this will tell me the battery voltage. Oh, the battery voltage and what temperature the actual machine is at so we know we've got seven uh, 12.7 volts so i know we've got enough voltage to actually test this what i'm going to do is unscrew this take off that and what i like to do get a little sucker get my container put the brake fluid in Yeah, just leave that over there. I'll get you to, so you can actually see the colour of the brake fluid, as you can see, very black and horrible. So what we're going to do, take this off, make sure it's full enough. I just need to see. Yeah, I might have to turn it to the side a little bit, but it's full enough. And then what we do, press and hold, let it heat up. It's going to heat up and bubble away. And it's going to tell us what our boiling point is. It is kind of getting hot now. <laughs> My fingers are in the wrong place. Yep, that's getting hot. Ow. 107. So there we go. And it does say dot three around 140, dot four, 155 and dot 5.1 180 that's only 107 that's really really bad so we're going to replace it sort it now this is what we're going to use to bleed the system because i'm on my own we can use this bad boy we've called it or simon picked the name vlad the bleeder which is a fantastic name i'm going to get a sticker made up and this was from hubby tools fantastic piece of kit but i did do a video on it and i did kind of mess up I did it wrong so I just want to basically tell you what I did wrong and what we should do we have essentially start and stop switch up here now what I did is on the stop function I turned up the pressure and then I went to start you shouldn't do that this is like a bypass so if you switch it on and by some accident you do have a lot of pressure on here it stops the brake fluid kind of spilling out everywhere and causing a you know a bad mess so what you need to do is we need to turn it on flick it to start and then turn the pressure on 
that's what we need to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook this up first. No point me showing you because it is so simple. I'm going to screw this into the reservoir and clip this in. But before I do that, what I am going to do is bleed the blade out. So we need to connect this to the battery. It's another good thing. This is works on the battery, so you don't need any airline or anything like that. Which is really good and handy. So one thing I would really like on this, and I think I might add it myself, is just a little gauge just so we can see the battery voltage. Not really necessary, but it's just handy so you know what the battery voltage is. So what I'm going to do is we'll take this off, connect this, because what you don't want to do is be pushing a load of air into your system first, because that's what you're trying to get rid of. So clip that on, open up this, pull that in there, make sure our pressure is off, flick it on, oh, turn, well, it doesn't really matter, but flick it on, we had no pressure, turn it to start and gradually turn up the pressure until, as you can see, it started bleeding. So I now know that is started bleeding, which is good, so I can now turn that off because I now know there's no air in that system or there's no air in the actual thing itself. Put it on the car and I've just dropped the uh, lid and everything off. That was good on you, Leon. Well done. Now, what I'm going to do is just put this, I'm going to turn this on just under a bar. So hopefully, can you see that? Maybe not, I'm going to drop this down in a second. But I'm just going to put maybe just over 10 psi, just under a bar. That's the pressure I'm going to put on the system. Then we're going to go around each wheel and we're going to bleed it. I like to bleed the furthest wheel away from the cylinder, which in this case is the back left, then the uh, back right, and then the front left and the front right. That's the way I'm going to do it. So let me get this down. Let me get the car up in the air and then we'll get that done. So right, so there's our machine on the floor. It's turned off at the minute. I'm just going to turn this back on, go to the back wheel and we'll get the bleeding started. Blad the bleeder. Right, one thing I did forget to mention, which I've done, I've drained all the old fluid out the bottle. So as much as you can get out of that bottle, the better, because it means it's not really the end of the world, but it just means you're pumping all that fluid out and it's mixing with the good stuff and it'll take longer for it to come through your actual system. So get some sort of, you know, like anything, some sort of pump, a turkey baster, anything to squeeze out as much as you can from the reservoir, the brake reservoir, and then start the bleeding system. So yeah, we need to do that first. I've already done it, but you need to do it. I forgot to film it, sorted. Right, I have completely changed all the pads, the discs and everything all around, but that's not, you don't need to do that before you bleed the system, obviously only if they're worn. I will clean all this up as well, so no anyone shout at me. What I got is you see, I've got a bottle with different marks on. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go maybe halfway between the bottom and the first mark, possibly to the first mark. We'll see. We'll just see what colour the fluid comes out in. And uh, we'll know once the new fluid starts coming through because of the colour change. And then I'm going to do exactly the same on all four wheels, even though the back wheels obviously need to take out more because the pipes are longer. So what I'm going to do is put my 8mm spanner over the top first. Put my bleeder over the top and hopefully I can put this somewhere you can see we'll just can you see that yeah you can and then open the bleed nipple the pressure is already there I'm not expecting you can see now coming out you see kind of the color hopefully you can see that you can hear it anyway so all I'm essentially waiting for now is for the color to change then I know I've got the fresh fluid in there You need to know your system as well. Don't overpower the system because you'll just start causing more leaks and more problems. Um, so yeah, we can just see actually the color. Hopefully the camera's picking that up. The color is changing slightly. It's getting lighter, which is what it should do. So like I said, what we're essentially waiting for is the fluid to change. I know if I get to this 
top or this bottom mark here, I know that's going to be plenty, maybe more. Well, it's going to be, it's, it's going to be too much, but hopefully you can see now. Oh, let's just move the camera. Hopefully you can actually see the colour, how much it's even changed. And as you can see, we haven't even taken out that much. And already it's actually changing colour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the middle, between the middle and the first um, notch here. And I know that's going to be plenty for, for this side. And again, I'm going to then drain the bottle and do exactly the same thing the far side. But this is the best thing about this system. We've got a constant pressure. Constant pressure coming out. We're not messing with airlines and extra things and all that going off. We've got constant pressure going out and uh, it's so quick and easy for me to bleed the system. Love it. So I won't bore you with all this. Um, but yeah, you can see now once this side is done, what I might actually do is I'll just measure that so I know when the next one is but like I said to be honest you don't really need to go on marks as such because you can see the color of the fluid unless you test your brake fluid and it looks good but it, it tests as bad then maybe so what we'll do just for the sake of it we'll just we're, we're nearly there now as you can see about halfway I know once we're halfway there then I can just go to the first mark on the back and then I know we've drained them both equally we're really close there now that's about it you can see the fluid color is completely different hopefully the camera is picking that up completely different color to what it actually was as well so now all we need to do is lock this off lift that up pour it in there and as you can see no mess no nothing put our little cap back on Move to the next wheel. Sorted. Same thing again. Take off the little cover. Put our spanner on first. Put our pipe on next. Crack the bolt. Now, hopefully, you can see kind of how black that, well, how dark that fluid is compared to how light it was on the far side. So what I'm going to do now is just wait for this to go to the first mark. And then I know we've drained it more or less the same as the uh, as the back one it's just awkward to kind of get all this in shot at the same time but you can see the color is dark still it's getting lighter but it's still quite dark so once I get to the first mark I'll know we're good so I'll turn the camera back on once we're close to the first mark. Right, and there we go. We're very close to our mark. You can see how much clearer this tube is. Let me just get you down there. You can physically see just how much clearer that is than what it was. Again, knock our spanner off, put all the fluid in, make sure it's tight. And put our little cap back on. Let's move to the front, saw it. Right, because I now know that obviously the distance from the reservoir to here is short, so we don't have to go as much. What I am going to do is go to the first mark, or the second mark actually on this one, and when I go to the far side, I'm going to go to the third mark. So I know we're going to be more or less bang on with every single one of them. So we just hold that on there, push our pipe in, crack the nut. There we go, it's coming out. It's going to get lighter a lot quicker and a lot faster than the other one. And it's just a waiting game. Hopefully you can see that. Can you see that? You can. So what I'm going to do, same thing again. Just wait for it to reach that um, second mark and then we'll uh, go to the next one. Sweet! Right, and there we go. So again, lock it off. Make sure it's tight. Take that off. Oh, I did that wrong. Didn't do it quick enough. So the fluid goes back into the bottle. And the last one. And then we're done. So, same thing again. Take off that. Put 
I spun around first, put that on, crack it. There we go. Release, maybe I haven't released that enough. Put the spam in the wrong place, that's it. Ah, there we go. Now, just wait for this to get to the third mark. And then I know I've definitely got more than enough through. I know I've got enough through, because like I said, you can physically see the color of it change. So I know I've got enough of it on. That's not a problem. Just need to, uh, yeah. So what I'm gonna do is, once I get, this is in the wrong place, this banner, but anyway, you get the idea. Once I get this done, we'll uh, continue. What I'm gonna have to do is move the spanner, so I'm gonna knock it back off. Pull that down, move the spanner, so I can definitely get it open enough. And then, there we go. Now, so much better. So now I'll just wait for that to reach the third mark, and we've got all our brakes done, sorted. Right, and here we go. That's the last one done. Okay, now put that down. Make sure that's tight. Put a cap on. Turn off our machine. So I'm gonna do, knock off the pressure. Turn it to stop. Turn it off. Sorted. Right. Right, let's see what we've actually pulled out of here. Now bear in mind, a lot of new fresh fluid has gone through this. So it's not just the bad fluid. There is a lot of kind of new fresh fluid gone through it. Let's see what it looks like. I see how black and kind of horrible that is. That might not look like anything to you, but considering the color it should be is more or less the bottom of this pipe, you can just kind of see that coloration on it. That is just water, you know, everything, all bits crap got into that and just discolored that. And as you can see, that is horrible. I've seen worse, but it is still horrible. So there we go. That's the Hubby Tool Bleeder. Fantastic piece of kit. You've seen how quick and easy it was. Uh, what I'm going to do is just give this a wipe down now because obviously, you know, it's just nice to keep it clean, look after your tools, all the usual. I am going to put... I'm going to see if I can put it there. I might not be able to fit it there, but I'm going to fit it somewhere. Is a little um, voltage and amp gauge there, just because I think it'll be kind of cool. And it's always nice to know kind of what state the charge of the battery is in. So there we go, people. That's it. That's how to properly test and bleed your brake system. You do have to be aware of some cars, you know, they need different pressures. The ABS pumps can be a nightmare to bleed. You, you might need this plus some diagnostic equipment alongside this, you know. So you, just, you need to know your car first. Don't just, you know, get something like this or anything and just start putting loads of pressure in your car because, you know, you could end up doing a lot, a lot of damage. You need to know your system before you do anything. So that's it. Know your enemy, people. So look, hope it helps. Thumbs up, subscribe, all the users. Don't forget, links up here, links down below. But most importantly, don't forget, get your hands dirty. See you for the next one. Sorted.